It is so cool to see you, dude. Daniel, hanging out. We've got an amazing, amazing guest here. We have been just shooting the shit a little bit ahead of time, and this is already a lot of fun. Nigel MP is joining us, and I cannot wait to get into your story and for you to share your story with our audiences, man. So, uh, but without any further ado, I'd like to first ask Daniel how he's doing, and then we're going to introduce our guest and just get right to this thing, man. Daniel, how are you? Oh, thank you. Thank you, Brandon. I'm doing pretty good. I'm always doing good. When I can talk with you, and I also had a chat with Nigel before, so I know it's going to be a good story. So, yeah, guys, whenever you're ready. Cannot wait. All right. Well, Nigel, I mean, our audiences may be familiar with you, but some may not. So do you mind just in your own words, introducing yourself for those of their out there may not be familiar? Okay, right. Well, um, it's a pleasure to be here with you guys. Um, yeah, um, basically, I'm from, uh, you know, uh, a small country town um, out in the sticks, just sort of like about 30 miles north of London. Um, I've, I've, you know, I, I was born in 1968, so I'm <laughs> coming up for 60, no, 56 this year on 2nd of March. 13 days um, from now, I looked that up ahead of you being here. I was going to wish you a happy birthday. Yeah. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, anyway, um, I, you know, I, I was raised in not a very wealthy family, um, had a lot of dramas throughout my family life. Um, I was basically, uh, as a kid, I was like um, bullied throughout my education and everything. And I felt that I never fitted in with all the other kids at school and everything. Um, you know, couldn't really make sense of what was going on. And, um, you know, I, I always had a feeling like, you know, even from sort of like a very young age, but we weren't alone in the universe and everything. Um, but you know, I, I never really gave it much of a thought. Um, one thing that looking back on after all the events that I will tell, um, have happened, um, I always used to remember that I wouldn't sleep without a light on, be that in my bedroom or in the hallway, landing hallway, um, because I always used to remember saying to my mum, there's something under my bed. Anyway, um, that's beside the point. Life moved on. Um, I couldn't hold down jobs. As I say, I didn't fit in with other humans and everything, and I couldn't figure out why. Um, Anyway, way down the line, back in 2014, um, it was pretty surreal how it happened because um, it was late at night. I'd been watching a lot of the um, Ancient Aliens programs on TV with uh, Giorgio... Um, yeah, <laughs> that guy. <laughs> um Anyway, it got to like about 11 p.m. at night, and I decided, right, I'm going to call it a night, um, make myself a hot drink, go out into the garden, have a smoke, because I wasn't allowed really to smoke inside the house, because um, it was a rented house. Um, my partner had gone to bed, and our housemate had was up in his room playing his World of Warcraft or whatever he was playing at the time. Um, which he spent most of his life doing, locked away in his room. <laughs> anyway, so I've gone into the kitchen, made my drink, um, opened the back door into the garden. Only had a small little square garden, but it was nice enough, you know, we had a little garden bench there. And so I've gone out, sat on the garden bench, had a little um, place to put me a cup of tea. And yeah, us Brits love our cups of tea. Um, Anyway, so I'm sitting there, and our houses actually went down on a hillside. So they went from the top right down to the bottom of the hill to the adjoining road at the bottom. Um, and I noticed there was this light. It was must could have only been about 80 feet above the rooftop of this building at the end of the street. And um, I looked at it, and I was like, well, it looks too low and too bright to be a star or a planet or anything like that, you know. And I'm sitting there trying to think out 
what it could be. And I was thinking, well, it definitely isn't a plane because it's, um, you know, there's no sound coming. In fact, there was no sound from anything. It was like, it was like every sound had stopped. There was no dogs barking, no cats fighting, no wind, no nothing. It was totally still. Um, and there was no navigation lights coming from this object either. It was just like a great big white light. So I'm thinking, sitting there thinking, what the heck is this, you know? Um, anyway, I reached down, got my uh, drink, took a sip, put the mug back down, looked back up again. And I'm thinking, did that just start moving? And... Um, by this time, I'm transfixed with this object. It was like something that bonded me to, like, looking at it. I couldn't, I couldn't look away. And I'm looking, and sure enough, this thing is slowly coming towards me, like head on towards me. And it gradually came closer and closer and closer to the point where it was literally right over my head. And I'm looking up at this. I couldn't make any, out any detail of the, the object itself. All I could see was this very intense white light. Anyway, so um, I've literally stood up looking up at this thing and uh, I turned around and watched, uh, observed the object as it tracked up the gardens towards the top of the street. Um, and literally somebody had a big tree in their backyard, and it just vanished over the top of this tree and disappeared. And I'm left there with my jaw to the ground thinking, what the, you know. <laughs> and that was it. Um, and afterwards, I, I sort of like sat there, composed myself, drunk my, the rest of my tea, had another smoke, thinking, did I imagine this? Did I really see this? Did You know, it left me questioning everything my whole outlook on life from that moment changed it was like that i, I was just thinking to myself that was nothing man-made you know and um anyway after this happened um about three or four nights later um I was laying on the couch watching some TV, just chilling, and um, all of a sudden, I don't even recall like falling asleep or anything. One minute I'm laying on the couch, the next minute I'm seeing behind this um, like brushed aluminium looking table like they use in restaurants or <coughs> um, dental surgeries or something like that. Um, there was nothing on the table. Uh, uh, to the left in front of me, to the left, there was um, like what I can only describe as one of the stereotypical like um, greys, but it, it didn't look grey. It looked so, so more like a whitish grey. Um, I don't know whether it was one of the short ones or whether the tall ones, whatever, because obviously sitting down. Um, and I... Every detail I could observe in this room, there was no doorway. Um, there was like a glow coming from the edge of the ceilings of this room, like a bioluminescent greeny sort of um, glow. <coughs> anyway, um, next thing I observed was from behind the grey, this uh, eight to nine foot tall reptilian humanoid. Um, just appeared and he walked from behind the grey and I could make out every detail. It was like, um, if you know what a, a bearded green iguana lizard looks like, it's got like um, dark and light scales, green scales. It looked just like that sort of, but it looked more like the, my profile picture on Facebook. Um, it looked more like that the facial features and everything. Um, it had muscular body um, going down to thick legs with clawed feet. And then as he walked from behind the grey, I noticed there was about a three to four foot long tail. 
And he stopped literally right in front of my face, turned around, looked at me and sort of like gave a, a, a sort of smile. Um, and I felt like an energy go through from the head to foot, like a warm glow. It was like I wasn't afraid. I wasn't scared. And then in my mind, I was told, don't be afraid. We're not going to harm you. You are one of us. And then literally he raised her to me like that um, and then turned around, walked off and vanished. And literally, bearing in mind I was laying down on the couch, I was now bolt upright on the couch thinking to myself, exclaiming to myself, WTF, that was no dream. So do you think that you were still in your room when this happened and that the room glowed or that you transported somewhere else, either physically or I, your I astral felt, body? I felt that I wasn't at home anymore. And you don't know how you got there. You feel that you just fell asleep on the couch watching TV and then um, it just like you. I, just, I, as I say, I, I don't even recall falling asleep. One minute I'm watching TV. Next minute I wasn't there. Yeah. That's so interesting. Do, do you associate missing time with this? Did you have any missing time with any of this? I didn't actually, I didn't actually, I, I wish I had now. I wish I had looked at the time, you know, when I was watching the TV and then, but I, I didn't you can remember what program was on when you remember watching it. I, and then I what can't program even, was on I can't even you remember now. Um, I, I was just sort of like, you know, just chilling, watching the TV. I, I can't even remember what was on now. I mean, as I say, it's going back to like 2014 now, so. Yeah, but did you know, it feel like a dream or did it feel real? It felt real. It, it did not feel like a dream. As I say, I could make out every every detail. It was like so vivid. You know, um, they say a lot. Of, most people can't remember their dreams, but I, I've never. I've to be honest uh, with you, I've never really been one to um, dream. On the same way. Yeah. You know, I, so when it did when happen, was, it was pretty noticeable, and that's why you couldn't confuse it with yeah. the dream you feel. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. I mean, I, yeah, I have had, I've, I've had nightmares before, but I've, I've never really, you know, when I was, when I was very young, I had nightmares, but um, I've never really had positive dreams up until that point. Maybe they haven't been dreams and they haven't been positive and that's why. Yeah. You know, let me ask yeah. you this. What, what happened around 2014 with you outside of this? Were you just in a weird state? Did you lose somebody close to you? Was there some, was there some interesting times going on, some interesting changes in your life personally? Well, there, there, was, a lot of, um, there was a lot of upheaval going on um, in my personal life. Um, I, I ended up um, losing my work. Um, I, I was only doing sort of like casual work and um, at the time. And it, cause I, I, um, when I was working full time on the buses, um, you know, it was, it, um, I then went into, do, cause it was getting too much uh, stress and, you know, it's a very stressful job, bus and coach driving, dealing with, uh, you know, a lot of the members of the public, um, especially on transit work, you know. Um, and I, I went into working sort of like casual, uh, like freelance with uh, small little operators. And um, but I, I found that I was only getting sort of like, you know, bits and pieces of work here and there. So it was like, um, and also we had um, some issues with the place that we were staying at. Um, whereas like, um, because I wasn't working enough, I, we got behind with our rent um, and the landlady decided that she, uh, she wanted us out. And um, also um, she tried blaming us for the disrepair so I'm absolutely interested in hearing about your contact, your onboard, um, you know, experiences that you've had. What's the inside of the craft smell like? What do you have, you know, what a lizard turd fart smell like? Like what, what's going on in there? You know? <laughs> well, it, it was, it was it, when the, the, uh, the, the memories I had was that, um, 
you know, I, I was shown actually um, more than just sort of like the craft. I was actually shown like um, where I was originally from, um, which I can't go into detail about because of um, the the ones that basically forced us off of our homeworld. Um, you know, if they knew where our homeworld is now, it, it'd be you know, it happened again. So you feel like you're um, hiding here? Um, I'm not, I, I was actually brought here to actually experience, to learn, um, and the- to awaken uh, humanity more to what was going on. Um, you know, because um, a lot of a lot of uh, human humanity. You know, stereotypically say, oh, uh, the reptilian races are evil, you know, um, because they have in their mindset that, um, you know, what they've read on Google, what they, you know, and all this about the royalty, it's, you know, um, British royalty about yeah, the Nazi the queen was involvement a with the. Yeah. Yeah, um, about the uh, the Pope, you know, the Vatican and everything, uh, the Masonic influences, the the mind control, the Montauk projects, and all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, it's um, they they all put the blame at adults, you know, uh, but what they don't realise is that there is more than one. Um, species you know and they you know the amount of times i've had to say to people look there, there's good and bad in everything you know there's good and bad in animals there's good and bad in people there's good and bad in other things other beings you know it's like how you can stereotypically say to you know oh so if i turn around to you and say you know, without even knowing you, if I turn around to you and said, "Oh, you're evil," without any just reason, it's like, "Hang on, you don't even fucking know me." You know, <laughs> yeah, back off, bro. Yeah, but it's interesting. I yeah. like your delineation because, yeah, we're not lizard cysts. Like we get that there are different types of lizard folk out there, and then like some some have got to be good, you know, and in it for yeah. cool reasons. They just get a bad rap with all the lizard turds, as we refer to. Yeah, yeah. You know? Hmm. Yeah. So you met an altruistic group, do you feel? Yeah. I I I I I met what was referred to as benevolent beings, um, which basically um, you know, they're here to to look over the, our planet to um stop you know, it's like um you know, about all this business with um CERN. They they they, you know, they warned against um, what was going on with CERN, you know, because CERN, they don't, they haven't got a clue of what they're messing with. Well, do you think they're doing a good job? The aliens who say that they're benevolent and here to interfere on man's be- betterment, do you feel that they're doing a great job at their job? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they've already stopped um, missiles being launched and given a warning to the, the military. they didn't stop the Holocaust and they didn't stop um, World War II and they didn't stop a lot of stuff. So it's no, interesting no, to think. No, no, um, But there, there was a case of back then that there was a, a no interference um you know, um, because the 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 dark powers outweighed what we could do back then. Mm-hmm. So, do you think so, it's balancing out now? Go ahead, Daniel. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, in, in fact, it's it's more than balancing out. It's um, you know, we're 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 actually um, getting to the stage where. You know, we we have raised a lot of awareness now. You know, people are starting to wake up and to realise. You know, this has got us. Why? Why do you think there's all these? Um, you know, people that. You know, why? Why do you think these? Uh, this stuff happened with Miami Mall incident. 
Uh, hmm. there, there's some there's some interesting uh, conversation to be had on that. Some people would say that the Miami Mall inf- incident was to distract you from the fact that Chase Bank went bankrupt, and so it's going to affect markets and things like that. It also is another lead to if you inverse the coordinates, it leads you to Antarctica, exactly. meaning that they may exactly. have beamed back from there, which that one's more fun. I'd prefer that, you know. And that is, that is the case. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's uh, one of the things that happened during that time period, and it's fascinating. And then the people who have the um, reports of well, what they I've, saw. I've actually got, I've actually got um, a couple of friends in the states. Um, uh, I, I can't remember where, where which part of the states they were in. They're in now, but um, uh, uh, husband and wife um, Peggy and Michael Jones. Um, they they've got a channel uh, called Vets Coming Clean. Um, and, um, basically, uh, they're ex-military veterans. Um, Peggy, she, um, was actually on, um, base security, um, like, a yeah, base, base police, basically, uh, from, for the U.S. Air Force. Mm-hmm. And in fact, she told me that uh, she was actually stationed out in the, in the UK for uh, some time, for years ago, at a base called RAF Lakenheath, which is like 60 miles away from where I'm currently living. Interesting. And um, yeah, she was telling me about uh, Antarctica, that she they wanted her to actually uh, go and work out there. Oh. Well, that sounds interesting. So while, while Brandon is looking all these things up, I have a few questions too for you. Um, I'm interested in, um, have you ever ha- experienced some kind of sleep paralysis throughout your life? Maybe at one point in your life when you were younger or? I've had, um, I haven't had actual sleep paralysis, but I've had a couple of weird happenings um when i was very young um i mean i'm going back to um as i say in the 70s where the house that we were living in was an ex um rented council house that my mum ended up buying off of the local council they brought in this um scheme where if you'd been a council tenant for x amount of years you could actually buy your property from the council cheap anyway um but our house actually did not have any central heating system um all we had in the living room was one of these um wood framed um it was a gas uh, fire with like ceramic tiles inside uh, which glowed it you know heated up and glowed um, and we had metal frame windows no double glazing back then now there was one occasion where my mum my always used to make my bed for me when I was a kid uh, she'd be you know especially in winter time it was like you know She'd put loads of blankets and loads of sheets on the bed to keep me warm at night, tuck them right underneath the bed. So it was like I had to literally shoehorn myself into bed, you know. Um, And one time I remember waking up and I don't know how the heck I happened to do it, but I was still – all the bedclothes were still tucked under the bed and everything. But – my head was facing where my feet should have been. Mm, okay. And, and I'm panicking. And my mum came in. She's like, where are you? It's like, I can't get out of bed. I can't get out of bed. And she's like, your head's down there. What are you doing? There? How did you get down there? <laughs> and to this day, I still don't know what happened there. Okay. Do, you, do you think some kind of levitation happened or something like that? Unless they took me and placed me upside down. <laughs> so this is were why your I, clothes on backwards, and were they even yours, your pajamas? Um, no, I'm, uh, yeah, I was, I was, I still had my pajamas on, but um, as I say, instead of being the right way up, I was head head down in the bed. Yeah. So all the things could be related to what happened after 
afterwards. So this is why I ask these questions. Mm. Do you, are you into out of body experiences? Have you experimented with it, or do you, do you think you you had an experience with that maybe by accident? I have had um, when when I when I was living uh, at the time when I had the um, my first. Uh, sighting and everything there was one time where i actually um i didn't know i i blacked out um all i remember was coming to on the floor of the living room my partner was on the phone to the uh to the paramedics um and i came to and i was like what's going on what's going on And my partner said, you stopped breathing and everything. And I'd actually, um, I'd actually wet myself and, um, yeah, hmm. at the same time. Um, but I came to and I was okay. And my partner was like, you, you need to go to, I said, I don't need any ambulance. I'm okay. And I was, I, I was fine after that. It was just like, I, I'd literally stopped breathing and everything, apparently. So you stopped breathing, your heart stopped beating, everything? Yeah. Damn. For like a few seconds and then... But you didn't get the ambulance? No. Okay. That's wild, man. <laughs> What That's do you feel why was occurring while you weren't breathing? Do you feel like something that you left your body and that you were just out and nothing was controlling it? Yeah, yeah. I, I felt like, I, you know, when, when I when I came to, it was like literally, it was like zapped. I'm like back there. Did you have trouble moving, like any paralysis when you woke back up? No, I just I just picked myself up off the floor and I had to go and clean myself up. Um, but afterwards I, I, I cleaned myself up and, um, yeah, it was like nothing had happened. So we already brought the reptilians into the game. So let me ask you this. Are you still in contact? Are you able to get in contact? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Some kind um, of power over uh, you? Do they, do you sometimes feel remote controlled or something like that? Or do you? I, I can I can actually channel. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, well, I'm if they have to anything to say uh, while we're here, they're welcome to pop in. If they have messages for humanity, you can let them know that. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I I've got um, a ship that's um, always guarding me twenty four seven. The the uh, the the commander is a guy called Commander Guard G A R R G H. And then you've got uh, the chief engineer is Tar T A R R G H, and um, yeah, basically um, when I was on the craft, um, I remember being shown around everything: um, the propulsion systems, the cloaking systems, the replicating systems. Um, basically, I even got to actually control the craft. Um, by basically placing my hands on this pad and bonding with the craft. When you say replicator systems, I'm thinking of those orbs that pop into being and then they split into two and then three and then five and then seven, right? Is this what you mean by this, that they're able to replicate themselves in physical reality and bi-locate? No, no, this was like, um, you know, on, on Star Trek where they have the replicators to replicate food, to replicate I tools, see. whatever they need. Got you. Okay, like can, they can build physical food. objects out of atoms, basically, yeah, that are yeah. utilized for their crew. Okay, yeah. got you. I thought you were saying like it replicates the whole damn craft and then it duplicates itself and that oh, brings no, all no, sorts the, of new uh, conundrums into it. No, the, the craft is actually like, um, it's, how is the best way for me to destroy the, the craft is actually, you know, it's, it's semi, semi conscious. Yeah. I was going to ask if you felt that it was alive. Uh, we've heard a lot yeah. of that. Yeah. Yeah. So you feel that the craft has a consciousness to it? Do you think it's an AI-ran system that's conscious, or do you feel that it was maybe once a living being, or are you evil, even able to distinguish the two? 
it felt like, you know, it could communicate with you as you with it. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. Interesting question, by the way, Brendan. I, I love the yeah. question. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting question. Yeah. yeah. Very interesting. Love, love the All the stuff. stuff is fascinating. Framework. Yeah. Um, but um, I, I was also shown, as I say, the propulsion system, which is, um, you know, you, you don't you don't have like um, like electrical generation, as in like you know you, you don't have a an alternator generator or anything like that. The power actually comes from crystals. <laughs> Um, they have these banks of um, like these purpley sort of um, you know crystals that are in banks that um, you know are shielded and they they provide the power for the whole ship. So Nigel, where are they located? Where are these reptilians? Well, as I say, um, we we originated actually from inner earth um before the uh before the dark forces took over outside of earth um we were basically forced underground and when when did that happen do you know when it happened i i you know, I mean, this happened many, many decades ago. I mean, you know, we were we were around in the days of, you know, the, the dinosaurs were still around. You know, it was like, you know, we were part of them. So, There's sort of a bipedal offset of the dinosaurs from that time, and then we, maybe we, went underground. We we were more related to the uh, to the dragons. That's cool because I've heard dinosaurs weren't even a thing, and that it was actually all dragons, and the dinosaurs yeah. are the psyop. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So you it's were more related to a dragon at that point. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. It's interesting. There's so many. There's so many questions in my head right now because I remember. So since you told me you're you're channeling these guys, um, have you heard of the legend of the the Zulu warriors in Africa? They they talk about that there was a time before the moon was there. So yeah. the, moon, the moon appeared like 16,000 years ago, something like that. Mm. There's people that say that the big flood happened around that time. That's So that's an interesting fact, too, if it's a fact. <laughs> I don't know. And, and the fact, too, is that the moon isn't what it seems. I agree with that's that. If you've seen, there's a picture. Um, I don't have it to hand, but there's a picture that depicts the moon as hollow with that is um, actually a, a craft inside. Yeah, Alex Coyer talks about this, that the moon was a hollowed out planetoid that with a machine built on the inside of it and brought here. And that'd now, be a good way to sort of traverse. I, um, I had um, a lot of things confirmed to me that um, I already, you know, um, in my mind, with the research that I've done since uh, my first sighting back in 2014, I've I've been so far down the rabbit hole. I've seen the Mad Hatter, <laughs> um, uh, and basically, um, I watched uh, a friend of mine actually sent me a video of a Mufon symposium, and they were talking about this guy that worked for the military. Um, he was a, I forget what the guy's name now is. Um, he was a draftsman and engineer. Um, and basically he was given assistance from Nordics to create craft, uh, like reverse engineer craft. Mm -hmm. And one of the, uh, they now apparently the military actually have the technology and the craft the, and the technology they possess is get this a thousand years ahead of what is current knowledge minimum 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 yeah. 
And they have craft that can go to the center of our galaxy within 45 minutes, 45 minutes. And also the Pentagon has a portal to the moon. They can go to the moon, have a meeting in the moon, and be back in 10 minutes flat. Pretty wild. I've even heard that the moon is holographic in nature and that maybe the flood that accompanied the appearance of the moon, because there is another Chinese, a couple of Chinese cultures uh, in that time period as well that identified time before the moon and that it was brought here or, like you said, suddenly appeared. Then one could say that if this is a simulation, as you know, uh, Jason Burmese talks about with the Phoenix cycle and things like that, where there's just a deluge every now and then to mer- where, me- yeah, maybe the faucets are turned on underground and that the things that they're calling craters from meteor impact sites are actually just geyser uh, points, and that's what fills this entire place and flushes this mm. out. And then maybe yeah. in the next reset, there's a moon in the sky at that point. And whoever survived mm. it, maybe you went underground, maybe you just sort of found a boat uh, and rid- rode the thing out. Then you explain now, hey, there wasn't a moon before. There's a shitload of water, everybody's dead, and then now there's a moon. And then you could pass that on. Maybe it's similar to the now the way that this place works, and it seems to be more of a control system. And David Icke and everybody talk about this idea of the Saturn moon matrix, and that in near-death experiencers talk about they're taken to the moon or something like that, or um, people on um, contact cases say their first trip is usually all the way to go around the moon and then come back, right, on a craft. So the moon plays an integral part in, I feel that, perception management in this place no matter what if it's a place you can go to or not well to, to be honest as well i've um i've been out at night uh doing some sky watching and i I've, I've witnessed some way out of um normal stuff you know i mean um i've, I've even had craft that um you know i've seen sort of like about 14 craft within an hour, hour and a half. I know we're on busy flight paths, but not that time of night and not that regular. <laughs> um, and I've, e- I've even witnessed lights that literally have turned on like somebody's hit a light switch. And before I could get my camera out to a video or take a picture, the lights just blink straight out mm. within like a split second. Yeah. And I've witnessed as well on on cloudy nights where you get that um, haze where, like, you can see the moon um, through the haze of the cloud. But I've, I've actually watched where there's been um, the actual light from the moon instead of the clouds moving, where, where the clouds have just been stationary, the light has actually moved through the clouds. Yeah, more of a local luminary than a super far off there thing you can go stand on and drive a mo- mm. drive a go kart on, right? Yeah, it's pretty mm. interesting. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I want to say this uh, since I talked about the Sulu and the Moon legend. The Sulu also talk about that with the Moon, there came reptilian beings. I want to say that. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, also, what I will say is that, um, I, you know, previously when I mentioned about my home world, um, you know, the, 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 the Dracos, the Alpha Dracos, which are the, for those of the, the, the watching that don't know, the Alpha Dracos are the, uh, the ones that are the um, ones that are in the powers that be, the royalty, the um, government, the um, religious leaders, you know, like the Pope um, <laughs> uh, in the Vatican and everything. Um, you know, they're, they're the ones that are, the ones that are trying to control everything. Um, you know, their, their motto is buy, consume, obey. You know, they're the ones that are holding back everybody's, uh, trying to hold back everybody's awakening, everybody's advancement, everybody's enlightenment. You know, and that's why basically I'm down here now to try and awaken more people to, you know, spread the word to, um, 
yeah, you know, um, push for the disclosure of um, what's going on. Mm-hmm. You know, I heard a few years ago that there were some underground rumblings, literally, not uh, metaphorically, that explosions were being heard underground. There were then laser beams being seen, sent from heaven somewhere, right? Not emanating from the ground, but coming from the sky Mm. that were then uh, going underground and then nothing would happen on top, but then explosions would follow, right? So there was these interesting sort of, again, wars seeming to go on underground. And then a couple of years ago, there was some huge announcements by people in the know that said that all the reptilians are gone. And that all the yeah. grays and reptilians had left the planet. So what did that look like and what is the result of it? You know, because um, I haven't really seen a, a, a let up in the agenda. Like, is there, are there still grays running around here and lizard turds that haven't gotten the memo yet? Oh, yeah, they, they, they're, still the, they're still the hangers on. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, um, obviously, you know, um, there are... Um, you know, for reasons that will become clear eventually, um, these last few that uh, have got to be got rid of, it's not proving as easy as you know, in in, in, in visions, you know, um, but you know, obviously, they they are. St- these last few are the ones that are still calling the shots at the moment. But within the next, um, we're now 2024. By the timeline is looking at between 25 and 30. Yeah, I've heard some people say the uh, Earth won't be here a year and a half, and it's done. They're frying it out, and they're going to get the people ready off, and the people who aren't, they get to hang out and burn or oh, something like no, that. No, 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 no. The, the Earth will still be here, but it's going to be going through a massive change. Yeah, like a reset, like a yeah. going deeper into the level or the simulation. Basically, the, the as I say, the, the – the last few will be got rid of, and then the benevolent beings will be coming down and healing the planet. Um, you know, we're, we're going to be going back to the days where um, everything was more lush, green. Um, you know, people are going to be going back to uh, big-scale farming, Um you know, we're going to be going back to the old school bartering system. Um, and basically, you know, we're going to be living back off the land. Let me ask you, because it sounds like this uh, fifth dimension, third dimension split, this um, Armageddon, um, this Bible predicted sort of ret- retribution that takes place to where if you made good decisions in a certain light and based on a certain perspective, you're going to go somewhere else and life's going to be easy for you. If you made other choices in the opposite energy of that, it's going to be the opposite effect, right? It's going to be hard and challenging and all of those things. So do you think that that's what's occurring here? Is that this split that's been portrayed in the Bible and everything else that, and this Armageddon, this end of days and all of that, do you think that that's what's coming now or the opposite energy of it? Do you think that that's, uh, a psyop, you know, to keep people sort of hoping that things are going to change in the same way that every generation in my family I mean, has said well, Jesus well, is coming well, back in my life, and that never did. No, you know I, mean? Mean, I, I believe I, I know for a fact that um, basically the you know end of day scenario, the oh yeah, it's going to be like Armageddon, it's going to be Mad Max, it's going to be Waterworld, it's going to be this, it's going to be that. Um, that is not going to be the case. It is not going to be the case. That is that is in the programming to put in, instill fear, instill panic. That is what the that is why the um, the the, the uh, Alpha Dracos is they because they will, they they feed off of the fear they feed off of the negative energy off of humanity and that is why they're doing this that is that is why they that is why it was foretold that all this Armageddon and because the Bible and everything was created by 
the Alpha Dracos. I could see that. Yeah, that's an easy jump. You know, uh, and it's interesting, too, that it's been like this and that we've all been told that it's going to get better and that people are going to come help and just hang in there and all that kind of stuff. But it, do you yeah. think that that's a way of stopping you from being actionable and maybe making an actual change here is just to simply wait on somebody else to do it for you? No, we, we, we are actually making active changes. Um, you know, um, my crew uh, up there at... Uh, we, they, it's not just it's not just the uh, reptilians. There's other benevolent beings that um, the, the council, uh, the federation. Um, we are involved in. You know, people don't realise what goes on behind the scenes. You know, what we are dealing with on a daily basis. Um, I guess I guess not. And the challenge is because we out here in the normal daily basis see that a lot of this shit could have been avoided easily or averted absolutely uh, with anything honestly traumatic that occurs here um, because it's simply they have the power to do it and they've simply then at that point chosen not to yet there seems to be another no, they, force they here that also has a lot of power that has had free they, run on this place lot, uh, you know it's like in politics there's a lot of um, a lot of red tape a lot of things that uh, protocol um, allows us to do and a lot of things that they've stopped us from doing. I've heard that step-in occurs when karma is being violated, when sovereignty is being yeah, violated. Yeah. Okay, well, that seems to have been occurring here for thousands of years, if our history is accurate at all. So then at what? how many thousands of sovereignty-bearing years are they able to put us through breaking that sovereignty treaty that should end immediately before somebody steps in? Like, what's the window of time? But, but the, thing, the, the, the thing being that um, the, the Dracos were more powerful than anybody else. And we could not, we could literally not, uh, you know, they, they outnumbered us thousands to one, you know. Um, we, could not, we, we could not do anything until now where it's got to the point where we have, we have, we are basically kicking their ass now. I'm looking forward to seeing it, brother. Let's go. You know, swing by on that yeah. UFO and come pick me up sometime, man. I love to. I've yeah. got a play mix. Yeah. I've got actually a U, uh, play mix on Spotify, a playlist that reads uh, My UFO Mix with three X's. You guys can actually look it up, and that's what I'm going to jam in that UFO with you. I've already got a playlist ready to go. Dude. Cool. <laughs> awesome. Love it. Yeah. It's like, um, you know, um, we uh, we are very culture. I mean, you know, um, I've, I've I've got a very um, eclectic taste in music for for one thing. You know, it's like um, I I go right back to classical, um, you know, up to electronic, um, you know. New wave. I've been through the, all the music genres. Uh, you know, the only thing I will say is I can't stand the stock aching and watermelon crap. <laughs> yeah, and with you on that. <laughs> Love it. I have the uh, link in the chat there if you want to check it out, my friend. Uh, you can hop on there and uh, take it for a spin. Let me know yeah, what sure. counts through those UFO speakers. Is, is this your own music it, or, um, or just a compilation? That you... It's just a compilation of some fun songs that I found on there that I could see myself driving, and I've titled it Exotic Craft Onboard Mix. So you can actually, oh, right. while you're piloting your exotic craft, you've you've got the music to do so. You know, your soundtrack's covered. <laughs> I would check it out too. Thank you, Brandon. Yeah. Hell yeah. So, I think with that said, we should wrap it up for today. It was a wild story, Nigel, but very interesting indeed and i'm curious what the listeners will think about your story so guys put your opinion in the description you want to read it so yeah like i said i'm i'm done with my questions but um brandon do you do you have something got a million more and it'll be a good excuse to do this again so i'm looking forward yeah. to it nigel thank you so much well, brother this was awesome if, if anybody out there if, if anybody out there wants to add me as a friend on Facebook, 
Um, my profile is Nigel MP. Uh, you can't miss me. Uh, my my profile picture is a, a reptilian yeah. wearing a gold uh, <laughs> bling suit. <laughs> it's blinged out. Yeah, you have a royal lizard yeah. on there, and he looks he looks uh, awesome. Yep. Yeah. Um, so um, and also I'm I'm running a I'm starting up a YouTube channel myself. Um, I've already done a couple of interviews um, with a couple of friends of mine. Uh, uh, a guy called Les Durant, who's also um, a UFO witness. Uh, he's Good also friend. into paranormal. He's joining us in Georgia. Um, I met him in person two weeks ago. I flew out to Georgia for our event ahead of time, and yeah, he's one of our Mountain speakers. Well. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's one of our yeah. speakers at our event. Yeah. Uh, he's a, a, a country music DJ. Love that guy. Yeah. He's great. Oh, yeah, he's awesome, man. Um, um, him and his wife, Claudette, they are real good people. And I'm, I'm so jealous of where they live up in the mountains, 1900 foot up. Beautiful. We went up to their home and met them and their dogs and the stepdaughter yeah, and everything, I mean, man. It was great. The, 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 he, he was telling me, like, that um, basically the, their landlord actually built that little cabin house from scratch. And it's it's a huge wraparound porch way up in the yeah, mountains. Yeah, I on love this it. Windy, it's like, you know, road. Covered it's against gorgeous. all the weathers, and yeah. they just sit out there. And yeah, Les points his cameras. He's old. He's got a few old ca uh, phone cameras that he just points up in the sky and let's record. And I've had him on the show. Yeah, we have an episode, and he yeah. walked us through visually. There's a bunch of videos and pictures he shares and stuff like um, that. Yeah. He actually um, he actually approached me to ask me um, how to communicate with them. Mm. Damn, that's interesting. Well, if you guys yeah. want to come out and hang out with us, events uh, May 15th through 20th, uh, connect at expandingrealityexcursions at gmail.com, and we'll get you info. Yeah, sure. Okay, Nigel. Then... We're going to kick you out of here now. Yep. Well, it's been, <laughs> well we uh, love you, dude. This is great. It's been a pleasure. And, uh, you know, it's been a pleasure to meet you, Brandon. And, yeah. Same, brother. Yeah, it's brotherhood already. I'm grateful for your story. Uh, are you, you already on forward. my friends list? Or? Yeah, we've been friends for a long time. Daniel just does this. He plucks friends out that I've had for like a couple of years on there. And oh, he goes, oh, hey, right, have you ever talked right. to this guy? I'm like, no, but we've been friends for a couple of years. Let's do it. <laughs> and here we are. Thank you, Daniel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At the least I'm uh, useful yeah, for we'll, something. We'll to, um, Brendan, we'll have to um, do some voice talking um, and catch up. Yeah, absolutely. We're already buddies on there. I'm under Brandon Thomas. Um, and just, yeah, hit me up on there, dude. I'd love that. That'd be great. Yeah. Daniel, right, thank you. This has been amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a pleasure, Daniel. You're welcome, guys. So, Nigel, like I said, I'm going to kick you out of here right now. Wish you an awesome rest of your Sunday. Thank you. Yeah. And... Hope to talk to you again soon. Yeah, brilliant. 